Okay, so this studio is very, very cool, and it is my friend Jared Logan's studio who just makes amazing music that I love and use in all of these videos. Here's just a little taste of what I mean. Before we get into Jared's studio, I want to thank Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Sweetwater obviously being the perfect place to get the gear you want for your studio, if you're a songwriter, musician, artist, whatever. In these videos that go up every Monday, by the way, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, notifications on, get notified every time they go up. And you see something in the video that you want to check out, like for instance, Jared and a lot of other guys at JTL Studios are using these Loughton audio mics, and I've heard a lot about them, and just so happens these mics are 20% off this month on Sweetwater. I'll link them down below. I'm actually gonna be checking out the LS208 and the LS308s because I've just heard such great things about them. I had to check them out for myself. Again, you can get them 20% off this month. I'm gonna be checking them out throughout the month, trying them on a bunch of different things. So you can, again, subscribe if you wanna see how that turns out. I'll try it out probably on guitar and drums and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for those videos to come out later this month. You can check out the links to these mics and all the other gear I use and some other stuff that I like of Jared's down in the description. So I met Jared because he is sort of the brainchild behind a bunch of different artists that I use their music in all of my videos because they're just perfect for everything I do. That intro song was uh, Taz Conley, the track produced by Jared. The song that's playing right now is Red Licorice produced by Jared. Another amazing project that I'm a huge fan of is Utah, that Jared is one of the main people in addition to Zane Callister, who we did his studio last week, linked right here. Really inspiring dude, very talented. I'll put all of Jared's links down below so you guys can go check out his video. Also, if you're signed up for the membership at andrewmastersmusic.com, you can see the behind the scenes member exclusive videos where Zane and Jared show me how they actually record in their studios and give me a behind the scenes look. So make sure you become a member. I'll put that in the description as well to see the members only content, which also goes up every Monday at andrewmastersmusic.com. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go check out Jared's amazing studio. Dude, thank you so much for having me out here. Uh, I know this is your place and I'd love if you could give me some background on it. Yeah, this is JTO. We've been here for nine years. We started off with me and a couple guys in, in my basement studio. I used to live just down the street. We actually got the keys to this building a year before um, we moved in here. We tried to put a deal together to, to, to do the building and it just kind of fell apart. Okay. In the meantime, just kept building what we were building. And then a year later, I get a phone call and this guy's like, hey man, do you guys still wanna get in that building? So since then, another guy bought the building and he was like, man, I think it'd be cool if there was a studio in here. And so we connected and this was like, this dingy, dingy, nasty old kind of office space. The back where the live room is was a garage, just like a filthy garage. Wow. And so we just flipped it all around and turned it into a studio. And two years ago, we added on next door. So we have three more studios over there now. So like Zane's room that you were in, and then upstairs, Matt Bowden and Logan are over there. So with the original building, and then you add it on to the building. Mm -hmm. How many studios are in this building now total? Seven. Seven studios. So there's seven control rooms and then like Judah's room has, a, has an ISO booth. Zane has his own ISO and then upstairs the guys share an ISO. And then in here we have the big live room and then Judah's connected, Callan's connected, I'm connected and Adam's connected to that. I love the community aspect of it. Yeah. Of like you're all here doing your own thing rubbing shoulders, for collaborating, sure. yeah, for getting sure. feedback. So part of that is like, I know you've worked in different spots before, but like the old model is, I'm gonna build a room, I'm gonna put a bunch of gear in it and hope that people rent it out. Yeah. And I was like, man, I wanna go get a building and I wanna get a room that's good for tracking drums and get a grand piano, like get a couple of those things that like might be hard to have at your house, but like, let's make it about the people because at the end of the day, people yeah. make records. So this space was like, okay, let's get a bunch of rooms and then instead of like, there just being a bunch of rooms that people can rent out, like let's get a person that works out of that room and then okay. that room is like 
that's Judah's room. Like, they, yeah. like he does all kinds of stuff out of that space. And so we all have our own businesses. We all have our own LLCs, S Corps, whatever. Everybody works out of here. And then, I don't know, it's like entrenched in music. Like if I do this, if I start this, then I should take a percentage of everybody's yeah. stuff and I own a piece and that's just how it is. And you work your way to this and that and whatever. And it was like, what if we just like build out space and then everybody can have their, at least their own space. Yeah. Now everybody owns themselves. Yep. And then everybody's gonna wanna collaborate because yeah. somebody's not dipping in everything and all that. Of and you know, people hold on to that little bit that's left. And that's exactly what's happened. So like me and Zane do Utah, we're here. Me and Adam do Call the Ocean, we're in here. Judah and Boda have uh, Supercuts, they're in here. Zane has Young Collective, um, Wonder Club, he's in here. Braxton, Judah, and Zane have uh, <laughs> The Invention of Flight. Me and Zane have Cardamom, I have Red Licorice. Me, Callan, and Logan have Same Wave. Logan has Locked In and his band Familiar. Boda has, um, he's working on a solo record and then him and Callan have uh, Pop Culture and then Callan has Calio. Oh and so my gosh. the list goes on, you know, and then yeah. Judah's scoring. He's got his original stuff under Judah Earl and he's scoring a bunch of stuff for like Netflix. And so like, there's all this like super fun collaboration that goes on. Part of what happens is you end up with like, it could be anything from a Pro Tools error to, you know, some problem you've never run into or, or you discover something really cool on a plugin. Yeah. And you run down the hall and you're like, yo, check this out. Or, yeah. hey, have you ever, can you help me? Yes. And then it's like, yeah, I can help you with that or whatever. So yeah, so uh, this is the lobby. So when you first walk in, you got this and, We've set it up a bunch of different ways, TV, video games, whatever. But when COVID hit, we kind of like switched it up. And honestly, like I've been hesitant to put a TV back out here because it's just kind of been a vibe. Just everybody hanging and, and just, we just talk out here, have meals together out here and all that kind of stuff. So that's that. And my room's in there. We'll go in there in a little bit. Judah's in there. Bathroom, of course. And I, I'll give you this too, huh. a clean, Nice professional space. Yeah, man. Except for don't 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 get the garbage can and squatty <laughs> potty. Yeah, for sure. A nice little kitchen. Little kitchenette. Callan's right there in Studio C. This is really really nice and very well maintained for the fact that there's not like a manager telling people to keep it clean. True. 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 I true. love that. Come on in. Oh wow. And so yeah, this is our live room. This room is absolutely yeah amazing. Man. We have fun in here, so. Baldwin Grand Piano, signed by John Tesh, actually. It lived its life in, I think, um, a Lutheran church, if I remember correctly, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm from right outside of Milwaukee, and a friend of mine is a piano tech up there and builder, and he, he uh, sold this piano the first time, and then the church wanted to sell it, and I was looking for something, and I wanted something a little different. So we scooped this up and then we felted it. And that that was that was cool, man. That was a game changer. Like I know felt's kind of the thing right now, but there's something with like the way the timbre of the piano changed. It just felt yeah. really, really good. Like sometimes a grand piano can just be too much on a record. Like it fills almost too much space. But when we felted it, it was like, man, it just it just like took it down a little notch and like mellowed it out and fit super well. So yeah, so we got that. The square footage in here and the height is just so inviting and opens up a lot of creative doors which is really really cool yeah so like we've had whole bands in here and like little chamber orchestras and like last night you were in here filming that we had a choir doing a oh that's right anthem. Yeah, yeah i got that yeah which is super cool for a new country in uh in africa which is really cool and um i'm a drummer so dude this whole thing yeah, it's I got almost the drum like umbrella. a separate drum room yeah right and that was cool so jhs pedals is next door Josh is my homie and uh, he had a studio space for a while. He's like, I'm getting a drum umbrella. You want a drum umbrella? And I was like, yeah, I want a drum umbrella. And he was like, all right, I'll have the dude build you, a, build you one too. So he like framed it out and then we just like finished it out. And actually what was crazy was when he built it, I had no idea what the measurements were going to be. We couldn't even fit it yeah. through the door. The door so we had right. to like chop it in half and get it through the door and then put it back together. So. And that comes up here on this pulley system. Yes, yeah, on that got, winch. Yeah. And then you got the little remote here. Yep. That's so cool. Yeah, and that's cool because the room, the room's a little live right now. And so it's cool because you can tighten the kit up. And we've done some like full live bands in here and stuff and it's cool. Drop it like really, really low. Oh yeah. Put some gobos around it and kind of make a little, a little bitty room inside of a big room. So I just got this a couple months ago. I hadn't bought a kit in a while and I found like, I would buy like samples and sounds and synths and all that stuff. Then I would go to play drums and I'd be like, man, it's the same old, same old, you know, you kind of yeah. get tired of the same old sounds and so i'm like you know i'm gonna get a new kit my friend owns a couple of music stores back in wisconsin and I, I saw this thing pop up it's like 64 65 i think oh um, nice keystone badge 
with that piano black, like that paint, it's yeah. chipped up just right. So yeah, I had to scoop it up. What's cool is a lot of the music I've heard from you, it sounds to me like loops and samples and uh, VSTs and stuff like that, but you're like, you come from a musician background and For sure. you integrate both live instruments with the world of samples and, and VSTs and just mesh them all together in your own particular way. Which yeah, is yeah, so like Utah, like I played on Lights Out, yeah. that's real drums, and I played on I think when people come together, part of that is mostly just that like, I like the way the program drums fit better. Yeah. But I kind of program thinking like a drummer. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, it's fun. And Red Licorice, like that's all program drums right now because there's this like fine line of where the genre crosses over sure. a little bit. And so I like kind of staying true to the, to the hip hop vibes, you know, and sampling stuff or play like on my iPhone and sample it off my iPhone because it kind of sounds trashy and cool. And is this a collaboration of everyone's drums? All of them are mine except for the Tama kit. That's my friend Dave Browns. So this is like a early 70s. Ludwig, so it's got the, the pointy and the round on the badge, and that's got three, three ply shells with reinforcement hoops. Pretty much the same type of shells as this. And then this beach custom kit I've had for, I got that as a graduation present, high school graduation present. So I've had that for a long time and I've toured all over the country with that joker and then the snare too. And then this one is cool. Like this is like a 50, it's either 56 or 57 Slingerland. So I walked into a music store and I like never, at least at that time, I'd like never done this before, but I walked in, I saw the snare, I was like, that looks cool. Put it on a stand, hit it once. And I was like, I'll take it. And then my friend told me, he was like, that worked at the store. He was like, dude, he was like, you know, what's crazy. And this was in, in, in Milwaukee. And he was like, that came from this retired session player. He just retired, sold us a handful of his stuff. And he was like, so that thing's like lived in a studio. And now it's gonna go back to living in the studio, which I wow. thought was super cool. Uh, one thing I guess I haven't seen or asked about yet is uh, microphones. Oh, where for where sure. do you guys keep mics and okay, yeah, and stuff a bunch like, of mics. Is it like a community, or you guys kind of just borrow stuff and keep it in your I own rooms? I have like a lot of mics, so everybody uses a bunch of my stuff, and then everybody else has some of their own as well. Oh, great! This is so I we've love got... this like road case thing. So okay, yeah. So when your friend is Josh and he has JHS pedals, oh, okay. sometimes you inherit really cool stuff. Look at the top like this. Of this so this dude. was made for uh, <laughs> this is so nice for Nam, and then wow. they didn't need it anymore. So they were doing 500 series modules for a while and I have a couple in there and here, I have a couple right here too. And this was like their display cases at NAMM. Cascade C77s, pair of those, nice. those are great. Those are ribbons. Oh nice. Yeah, ribbons. Yeah, like like the, what is it, the RCA? Oh, 77s. Uh, 77s, yeah. That's yeah. right. And then some fat heads. Oh yeah. We have three of those. Cascade, I gotta get some Cascades. Cascades are great, man. And they were like, the first pair of fat heads I got, unfortunately they got stolen years ago, no. but like they used to be 300 bucks shipped for a stereo pair m audio sputnik sleeper mic for sure those are cool yeah two I mic even, don't even the think i've seen power supplies in here somewhere but yeah these are cool like i don't remember who it was but they hired some some big mic man, like some some mic builder guy to like build it and so people just don't know because it's a m audio like yeah. never been known for microphones um, at all yeah for microphones like at all exactly and then uh adk custom one model tc but it's the u67 so that's cool what are you grabbing when you go to record drums for yourself when i'm doing drums my favorite i don't own my own right now but i love the um aea n8s on toms n8 on toms yeah whoa yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, my toms. guy yeah that's my favorite dude that's and, great uh, and so right now we usually use um the C77s instead. The N8s, like, that's the same ribbons from the R88. Putting those yeah, on the top is yeah. amazing. Yeah, and mic it, like, mic it, like, kind of on the side. So you're back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then you get the whole tom sound. It just yeah. sounds like a mixed tom. Like, it sounds, wow. like, amazing. And as a drummer, you have to play balance because yeah. you get a little bit extra in the mic, but those, that's, like, my favorite. And then kick either an RE20 inside. Okay. Uh, what is the, we have an EV mic, I always forget the name of it. The ND868. And that's on the outside? Yeah, or inside. Okay, just, yeah, dep yeah. just depends on the sound of the kick. Overheads, depends on the style. Yeah. Sometimes I like ribbons over the top. Sometimes I like one center ribbon and then two large diaphragms on the outside. So we have that's cool. KSM44s, KSM32s, TLM103s, or maybe like Sputniks. It just kind of depends on the 
on the vibe. If I'm tracking somebody else, I'll put more stuff up just because I'm not always sure if I'm tracking myself. Sure. If I can be more specific, I'll only put up a few mics that I think sound really cool and try to do it like that and not not have like a ton of extra yeah and try to capture like a really cool room thing like either between the room mic or like overhead mic something that sort of captures the whole kit and then put everything else like scoot everything else in like out like sometimes ribbons on the snare sound cool too wow um back a little bit or sm7 i like sm7 on the snare what about rooms rooms some large diaphragm something or okay, or ribbon cool. something depends yeah. or both like if we're not using the c77s Maybe those out here in the room or the fat heads in the room. And then I like the shirts in the room. Those feel pretty good and they're multiple patterns or whatever. So yeah. you can kind of play around with something like that. We have a AEA RD4, so that sounds cool. Yeah. Like as a mono. And then for this kind of room specifically. Yeah. Where are you putting the room mics? Look at this room. Honestly, I walk around. So we've tracked drums like everywhere in here, right here facing this way in yeah. front of the window facing that way. Built little, like taking all the gobos, put them all the way around the kit, put some more on top of it and make like a little hut. We've cut them over there. So it just depends. Usually if I'm gonna be the one playing, I'll have somebody else play and I'll just kind of walk around the room and see where I'm feeling, where I feel like it feels really good. So yeah. sometimes really high, sometimes more low shots. I like grabbing those gobo walls, putting them out, kind of blocking that area off a little bit more. And then sometimes I'll put a pair right behind and Braxton, who works here too, he loves to do that too. We'll put like room mics right behind the walls. Yeah, that's the And move. that feels super good too. Yeah, and then and then you could always put something way back here or we've like opened up the door for the hallway and put put a room mic all the way out in the yeah. front lobby. Yeah. And get some kind of cool crazy so slap. Yeah, fun. Dude. Yeah, it's fun. And we haven't done this yet, but I haven't had the right record to do it for. There's more studios up here, but like. Yeah. I'm like, I have to get that, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, Zane's straight across the hall. Matt and Logan are upstairs. Adam's room is here. There's another bathroom back there. We have three bathrooms, which is nice because for years when we were only on this side, yeah, we have one bathroom. That's right. And that's like the worst, so. Whose idea was this? Also super funny, cause shout out to JHS again. <laughs> they had this in their old studio and we're like, we're gonna throw this away. And I was like, I'll totally use that. So that works pretty good. And then Braxton who works here, this is his little like tech station and there's a pedal company brown that's right here they make the protein and the t4 right now so then you have these two more pianos over here yeah we have two more so i mean you know how this goes when you have a building like you inherit things so my friend khalid who now works at sweetwater he worked out of here for a while and this was his and when he moved out he was like man if you want to keep it you can keep it and it's uh, super cool uh sounding upright i have no idea what brand it is because it's it always it been missing all the, those yeah. those parts. I've never owned those. So that's a fun one. And this is a Kawhi. And this is actually the landlord of the building. He was like, can I store that here for a while? And I was like, sure. Yeah. Are these all fake plants? Yeah, for sure. Because there's no light back here. I was going to say, how are you guys maintaining yeah, no, all this? Yeah, fake plants. <laughs> one of my daughters came in and she was like, dad, you need some plants back there. I was like, you're right, you're right. So the other night I came in and the room just sort of magnetically drew me to the drums and yeah. I started playing and before I knew it, Judah was playing bass. He was on the bass, yeah, yeah. And he Callen came in, jumped came on in piano. played piano, that's right. Yeah. We were jamming for like an hour and a half, two hours. Like it was yeah. nonstop, which is really cool to just be able to walk into a room and then suddenly you guys are making something on accident. Whose bass rig is this? That's Judas, yeah, that's Judas. And it kind of like goes off and on between being set up like that and not, and even the piano, like we used to have the piano over here in the middle, but then we found like you wouldn't have as many of those jam sessions, or if you did, it just didn't right. feel as comfortable. Right. So having stuff sitting around, usually there's an amp sitting right over here to a guitar amp that's plugged in. So that way, if a spontaneous jam session happens, yeah. then it happens. Just the collection of fun stuff, man. All these little things over here that you can grab and also being able to see and access stuff makes like at the right time, you're like, this is what we need. Let's try this on the melody yeah. or whatever. Yeah, because you know, you find like, um, if it's not quick, it just doesn't happen a lot yeah. of times. Yeah. So like we even have, like I have a Juno, Zane has a Juno, but we also have the Tau Juno plugin. Yep. And you'd be surprised how many times that'll get pulled up because it's really, really fast. Yep. Even though our stuff's like all wired up and everything. And then you're like, wait, we should probably go back and like do that through the real Juno. And sometimes <laughs> you do and sometimes you don't. Or you're sometimes, like, but it's already done. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it, the plugin is a vibe and you just roll with it, you know? So you got this Lowry. Yep. This is fun. Is this one of those this somebody gave it little, to you? 
yeah, I inherited this too. The yeah, super fun. And we were just in here messing the other day and a bunch of the guys were jamming on it and coming up with like super cool stuff, so. And then what a collection of guitar amps. Yep, and I can't tell you that much about them because I'm not a guitar dork, but shout out to the guitar dorks. Uh, I just know that they sound good. I love this. This is Braxton Silvertone in his basement. And most of the amps that get used on a regular basis are in everybody's room. Like Zane's got gotcha. his Benson and Adam's got custom Browns and I've got, I don't even know what I have. Yeah, yours is on the ISO. Yeah. We'll talk about that when we get in there. Yeah, yeah. B and H. Wow. Funky some of these are stuff. cool, like sort of mystery. Yeah, and like some cabs, like these are, um, Dave Brown, who who does the pedals, like he also builds amps and guitars and cabinets and stuff too. And then what's this guy over here? Electra Piano RMI? Yeah, oh, this is- Oh, harpsichord. Yeah, this is like, I don't remember the keys player from the Doors name. He played that, just kind of funky oh, little cool. thing. Takes pedals well. I used to use it a, a whole lot more. I don't really use it too much right now, but it's fun. That's great. And you got some folk house just chilling. <laughs> yeah, right. So Judah just got, I don't know how many months ago, a few months ago, he got Dyn Audio, the, the Core 59s. Uh -huh. and these are his old ones, so. Dude, well here, I'll tell you this thing too real quick. So my high school had a studio. What? And which was like not normal back then. Yeah. Cause I was in high school in the 90s. And so we had Tascam DA88 machines and we had that tax Scorpion board. And my band teacher was just super cool. And he built a studio in there. And so when I started going to school there, one day I convinced him to let me mess with everything. And he was like, man, you don't know what you're doing. And I was like, no, 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 I do, I do, I do. So a bunch of my friends and I stayed in from lunch and we just jammed and recorded it. And I sat there and I messed with mixing it and stuff and I played it back for him. And he was like, okay, Jared, like, this is pretty cool, man. Like you yeah. should you should keep coming in here and messing with it. And so he just gave me free reign to come in. Wow. Play with stuff whenever I wanted. And then the school band had to do some recordings and I did the recordings for him and stuff. And he was like, you should, you should really think about doing this. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I really want to. Can I ask how much did you get it for? 200 bucks. 200 bucks, dude, <laughs> yeah. that's great. Yeah. What is it? 16, I had no idea if it tracks? worked. It was like, yeah, it's 16 with an eight bus and aux ends and all that. I mixed a bunch of records on that thing. Cool. Uh, control room? Let's do it. I've been in this room for nine years. I got a lot of memories in this room. So spent a lot of time in here and had a lot of good times. How big is this room? Do you know the dimensions? I think it's like 250, 250, 260, something like that. Yeah, that's something a, like that. That's a nice, because you have these whisper walls whisper on, the walls back on the back with the diffusion. How far does that go back? That goes back, I think it goes back four inches. We did a, like a while ago. I'm pretty sure it's only four inches thick okay. of, of the whisper wall. So like two panels in there? Mm -hmm. Two two inch panels. And then up here, this is two two inch panels as well, but there's a little bit more of a gap on the corners behind the front to the to the back and then yeah on the corners because the corners can wing out and like my my cable access to the live room is oh, right. back there oh perfect yeah got an imax way too old how long have you been using it i think three years now but i bought it used and it was like an emergency buy i was like cutting a record oh and my computer just is like i'm done and so i like had to go get something and uh zane has a friend that resells max and so i was able to scoop that up and i was like i'm gonna use this for like six months or like a year that's oh. it it's a band-aid and then i was like wow this computer's pretty nice and so i just rolled with it last year i was about to get a new computer found out about the m1s and i was like oh i'll just wait and get an m1 little did i realize i'd be like a year later before yeah, it's taking them a minute yeah everything would be compatible and so this thing's just sort of like limping along just struggle. It's on the struggle bus, but it is what it is, man. So it's cool. Yeah, it's been good to me. I'm using Pro Tools, which is probably like half my problem, to be honest, because yeah. Pro Tools isn't the most kind to sure. to uh, CPU and RAM and all that fun stuff. But And then these are your interfaces here, the... Uh... Yeah, X16s. X16s. Man, I really dig those. Like, they nailed it. Like, they just sound really good. And I got turned on to UA plugins man back in 2003 like when they first first came out they had the pcie card like single core pcie card and i was like man those sound really good and so went away from them for a long time and then ended up with one of the one of the satellites and was like oh man these are awesome yeah and so then i then i ended up with three satellites i was on a symphony with like a modded alesis ai3 black line modded alesis ai3 for some extra ins and outs and stuff and scooped up one of those and was like, okay, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so then I went and got another one and then it's got all the same amount of cores in that as I had in 
on my satellites. I found that to be enough, especially like with mixing, because some of those plugins are pretty hefty. Yeah. And as tens and a Bryston uh, 3B Oof. down in a in a rack down there. Great pair. Um, and then these, I've been using these for uh, it's been about a year and a half now. So these are Dutch and Dutch 8Cs. And I've been on the speaker hunt for a while. I had JBL 6328s and Focal, the, the same Focals that Judah has out there. I had um, Dyn Audio LYD 48s. I actually really, I really liked those, but I kept feeling limited in volume. And I was on the speaker hunt, on the speaker hunt. My friend Brian Calhoun, who masters all my records, We've had tons of conversations and he designs a bunch of studios with a company. And finally he hit me up one day, he goes, Jared, I found your speakers. And I was like, you did? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And he told me about them. And then he told me how much they cost. And I was like, oh man. He was like, honestly, man, buy once, cry once. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh dude. And then, uh, and then um, he was like, well, what if, what if they'll send you a demo pair? Like, would you, would you give them a shot? And I was like, yeah. But I'm like, I already know what that means. Like if I yeah. like them. It's yeah. over, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, come on, just give it a shot. So I was like, okay. He had listened to me talk about speakers forever, had never once been that direct. So I was like, okay, he clearly is onto something. And these are awesome, man. They're, they have the tweeter. This is the mid-range woofer that's eight inch. Uh -huh. And then they have these little, these little like port, like vents on the side. Oh, it's, interesting. it's like slightly different than like a normal port. And then on the back, there's two eight inch subwoofers on the back. Whoa. Hopefully I say this right, but they're cardioid. So it's kind of like live sound. So it like cancels out bad stuff. So like they're made to be studio or they can be used for like a hi-fi system, like in a room that's not treated. Oh, okay. And then they have DSP stuff built in. So I've been using them almost totally flat because I just love how they sound. They keep updating the software. So they now have like almost almost like a sonar works that you can that you can run on them uh -huh. and then you can go and you know flatten them out in your room or whatever i got them i hooked them up and we went and played what did we play it was uh the dark night oh that one thing that's like woo, 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 woo. you know what i'm talking oh, about yeah, like yeah we played that and everybody lost their mind you need speakers that you trust and that you can hear what you need to hear on and like all that stuff once you get speakers that you super dig you kind of forget about them to me they have like the clarity that ATC is really Whoa. known for, but then they have all this bottom that normally you would have to throw a sub in the room. Yeah. And I just get really hesitant to just like throw a sub in, in, in mm. a room. It just doesn't always translate. It's just tricky and this has been awesome. So I super, super dig those. And then this is the uh, the platform from Output? Output? Yeah, yeah, the Output desk, man. It's just a great desk. Like used to have this puppy this yeah, was my first they studio nailed desk. It, man like they came out with this and i'm like the design is cool it's got the mid-century modern vibe and then i love all the like cable stuff like i'm using all of them i think except for this one here and the cable tray in the back you can kind of clean your stuff up i have too many cables so it's like it's never perfect but it's, it's, it's never perfect for no anyone. no yeah. i'm tall so the like risers that they came with i just like bumped the keyboard tray back a little bit like one one thing back and then oh, put nice. it on the risers and that was a game changer oh, for me awesome uh okay and then i gotta ask you about this equinox yeah it's so your monitor it's, it's controller. summing yeah it's got 30 30 channels of summing so if you're on this you're on your daw one and two you're like default that's your summing and this is set up to be my return so like all the way back into Pro Tools and listening to that. And then you got your mic pre's. And then the mix, the summing runs through the mic pre's. So you can like bump the gain up on those if you want a little bit of extra color. Nickel transformers, iron transformers, and steel transformers. That is too big of a switch to make in the middle of like mixing a record, but I was so excited. Yeah. So I like made a switch when I was like in the middle of mixing this record. And, and then you had to remix all the first stuff? It just they all do their own thing you know what yeah. i'm saying so everything was changing and then thank god brian is like extremely gracious and i send him every mix i'd be like here's a nickel mix an iron mix a steel mix like i would send him like every transformer <laughs> but it was fun because he was like dude i'm down let's dive and so yeah. we just dove in and like found kind of what the sauce was it just sounds amazing and i love the iron that's my that's my that's my jam it like never switches that's amazing so monitor control summing and and mic pre's and mic yeah because you can access the mic pre's if you want like they're in the patch base so you could just track through the mic pre's if you want as well well you have a ton of other stuff one one of the things under here yeah. that i saw is the profit is, is yeah, that yeah. set up both midi and analog yeah so that's my the profit i use it as my midi controller and then yeah it's all wired up 
So I have the Motu MIDI brain there. All the synths hit that. And then there's a little Behringer rack mixer over there and they all hit that. And so that's fun because then you take the, the, the stereo output of that and you can patch it in like, we have the radials, the, the EXTCs. So that, those are, that's, that's right. patched up to the pedals so you can run the synths through there or have that 500 series Dimension D chorus. That pretty much always lives on the oh, back of the synths. Oh, cool. Cause it sounds cool. Like the Juno has an amazing chorus and the Prophet has a great chorus and all that too. But there's something kind of about that. So I'll toss that even on the back of, of, of the Juno chorus and all that too. So, and, and I had like a beat pad for years. Like a, I had an MPC old thing. MPC and then I had a, the MPD, like the pads with the fat pads and the corks and all the sensitivity stuff and all that. And it was great. And then there's like this little tiny Yamaha, like CS. And that one feels really, really good too. And so for years I used that as like, as my beat, my beat keyboard. When you're tracking mm -hmm. and you're using mic pre's, is there like a system for going out there versus in here? Or like, do you have two that you're like, I'm gonna use these two most of the time and then maybe I'll reach for some others? For pre's, yeah, I mean like my favorite pre's of everything on here is the uh, API 512Bs. These three actually have um, old 2520 op amps in them, like the, can't remember what year they're from, but they're the ones that like the label is white and blue. Okay. So they're like pre the 2000s, like I think they're Oh wow, 90s. early, I, yeah. yeah some, I think they both, they all three have dates on them. I think they're 90s. I like the way those op amps sound better. I'm not a fan of the newer, the black ones with the mm -hmm. silver and black uh, sticker on them. So the other ones, these two have, currently have louder than liftoff um, Rogue 6s in them. But then I also have Rogue 5s, so we can swap them out and put those in. The Rogue 5s are a little bit more modern sounding and the Rogue 6s are a little bit more vintage-y, like they just kind of saturate a little bit more a little bit more mid forward. And I'll try stuff through 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 other things too, like whatever sounds well, the best. Well, cause you've got these beautiful 610, you've got the, what is it, 6176? Yeah, 6176, so 610 with the 1176, 610 with the um, Opto on the other side. This is the, like the Ampex um, 360. I don't know, somebody can correct me, but, or 350, something like that, um, tube tube preamp with like the most insane amount of gain. It's is what it is. It's just got like yeah. a ton of color and what character. So like it either works or it just doesn't work. But <laughs> it's super fun when it does work. It sounds really cool. And then Golden Age um, pre 73s. So just Neve preamp copies. This is one unit and it's like two units in one unit? Or? Two, these are all separate units. And then they oh, just make a rack where they can all sit there together. So and then two Vintex. Did you get those earlier? I got those in I think 2010. I worked out a deal to where I got to be a dealer and I had like five friends that all wanted them. Oh, nice. And so it worked out. And then if you bought like a certain amount, you got one free. And then yeah, Audioscape, mid-range pull tags. Those are fun right now. Those have been living on uh, my vocal bus for mixing. Um, and then Makes we'll track, sense. like yeah, throw yeah, a snare course. through it or throw something through it for tracking or room mics on cool. LA2A, this is actually an early Audioscape. So before they had their own uh, meters and logo. That is so rad. And all that, yeah, which I love. I kind of wish they both had the same thing just so they match, but it's all good. They yeah. sound great. And I love that they took the high filter and put it on the front. Yeah. Cause it's kind of a game changer for yep. being able to tweak that in real time on an LA2A. And then what's this Fairchild thing? That's the Stam child. Stam, that's the take forever to get to you child. That's right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. So L longer than childbirth. That's the two and a half years. Yes, yeah, right. This is long. Yeah, you could have. You could think about having a kid, have a kid, yeah. raise your kid, <laughs> have another kid before you get the Stam child. Man, but it's like, good, though, right? <laughs> it sounds amazing. It really does. Yeah. I hope you leave all that in the video you, too. You resent it a little bit though. I had the. Um, Ooh, yeah. Mastering pots put in it too, so it's fully recallable. Um, everything except for um, the output. The output's oh, variable, but, but everything output. else. That's nice. Even the dry wet is is all detented, and so I, which I love that. So if I'm using it for tracking, and then I, but I'm also using it for mixing. It's like I can get exactly back to where I was before. No guessing. Is this a bus compressor SSL kind of thing? What is yeah. This? So like my mix chain it goes out of Pro Tools, hits the Equinox comes over here, hits the silver bullet. And this thing is crazy because like Zane told me about it, his, a friend of his got one and he was like, man, you gotta hear this silver bullet. I was like, really, is it really that cool? And then he bought one and we started running some mixes to it. I was yeah. like, it really is that cool? Like, whoa, I was really blown away. 
and he's mixing with a borough vancouver That's so right. i mean he's got a really cool summing box as well and i just heard it i was like this is neat and like you got the APIs, the Neves. You can go API or Neve, API into Neve, Neve into API. Jeez. You can use it. It's got two input, two stereo inputs. No, sorry, three stereo inputs, two stereo outputs. So you have a mix setup, track, or bypass. So that'll bypass the mix, but you could run like a keyboard straight into it or something like that. Oh, cool. And then you've got mics, mic pre's. So you can run oh. these as stereo mic pre's, or you could just run one side and do mono, and you can switch between a, uh, API and Eve, or like I said, you can run them into each other, which is really cool. And then you can cut cut this circuit in and out. That's They call that the mojo, so that drives into it. So this, on the API side, they come with uh, Rogue 5 op amps in them, and I switched it, and I bought the Rogue 6s and tossed them in there because that's what they had in the Void Corp edition, the like black edition. Uh huh. And so I swapped them out and put that in it and I loved it because it was just a little bit more gritty. Yeah. And I love I love that stuff. And then it's got a filter on it and then a backs and doll EQ. And then this vintage button just kind of rolls a little bit of extra top off. And so, then you have the same UA clock, right? That's what that is, the 2192. Yeah, and so this actually, this I was running, so I was going Equinox Silver Bullet, hit the bus compressor, toss this on the end. This is the overstay saturation. I remember watching Pensado like, I don't know, five, six years ago, something like that. And he had a, a prototype of that. Yep. And he was like, this is the closest I've ever got to that console, that center section yeah. drive. Yeah. And I was like, well, I want that. <laughs> and so, you know how you do it. You just, I don't know if you do it like this, but I do. I just check reverb like a thousand times a day or whatever. Okay. And one popped up for a really good deal. And if you check a million times a day, you know when it's a good deal. And so I scooped it up and I That's threw it hilarious. on the mix and like played with it for like, I don't know, for a few hours and like found this setting. I'm Set just kind of a nerd. It. Yeah, I'm kind of a nerd about that. It's like, just leave it alone. Sounds yeah, awesome. That's awesome. And this is just a SSL copy. Who's it by? Um, Revive Audio. Oh, I love really? it. I've had that for, for a long time. And it's got thrust medium and thrust low, like the 2500, like the API 2500. Oh, cool. And then it's got a side chain built in. So you can either hook a side chain up an external one if you click all the way over here. Mm -hmm or it's got a built-in one, That's wild. which is nice. So if, depending on what I'm doing, a lot of times it just sits on off. I just dig the vibe of it. And it's got the turbo um, mode thing, which is like a mod I think they did later on the SSL ones that everybody says sounds better. I don't know. I like the way that sounds better. So I always leave it in. I think the Audioscape guy told me he builds all his with that on all the time. Oh, okay, nice. So there's that. And then this little Behringer Edison, which is a stereo widening uh, rack really? unit. And I found out about that from my friend Khalid that I was talking about earlier that works at Sweetwater. Probably gonna get this wrong, but he was hanging with, I think the dude that makes Daft Punk. Mm. It was either him or another mix guy, but he was like, you wanna know a secret weapon? He was like, this like $80 Behringer rack thing. Yeah. Sarah Widener, he's like, I use it on like every mix. Wow. And they don't make it anymore. And so he was like, and so he found one. Yeah. And he was like, Jared, like you have to understand, this is really cool. And I always do a little little widening or whatever. Uh -huh. And so I found one, I just, again, just hounded. I think I, I got it on either Reverb or eBay and that's been living on my bus. And then, yeah, I was using this. All my mixes were hitting this for a few years. I bought that from Jordan Kreitz actually. Oh, he that's switched, right. He switched over to um, the Bombers, oh, the B2 that's Bombers. that's right, I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so when he got rid of that, I snagged that because the 2192 is the Burrow dude before he started bro. Right. So it's kind of, you know, it kind of has that bro vibe. All right, last two things I'll ask you about. Sure. Uh, one is this mic over here. Is this the go-to for vocals and acoustic and stuff? As it probably always goes, the go-to changes, right? Like yeah. probably oh, yeah, 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 with sure. whatever is new and fun. So this is a, a SE Gemini 2 mm -hmm. tube mic. I was looking for something that would kind of get into the C800 okay. G vibes a little bit. And this just has this like really beautiful top. I found that I could just run it through some, I didn't need to put any, add any top. So yeah. like the last record that I cut and used that mic, as far as on the actual channel, right. like I never added any top. It was there. It was just there and just felt really good and really natural. That's awesome. Um, so I'm super I love big fan. Happened. Yeah, it, th it sounds really cool. And SE stuff's not, it's just not that pricey. Tell me about the amp did. setup, because you told me this is okay, a secret yeah, yeah. So, situation here. I've just been trying to find something like I like tracking through an amp. There's just something about that. I just, I grew up playing in bands and yeah. direct guitar is cool. And sometimes that's the vibe, but I like tracking through an amp and it's just not always convenient to have a guitar amp just blaring either in here or, or there, in the yeah. live room or whatever, because multiple people use it. And I do have a Mojo Tone ISO box out there that's hooked up to this room as well. So we can 
switch what the amp is hooked up into and it can go out there. But yeah. this thing, found this guy on Reverb and unfortunately he's not making it anymore. We're hoping that he comes back. It's called a micro room. It's got an eight inch speaker in it and then an attenuator. And so basically his whole thing was all these people take like a really good speaker that's made to be like, you know, in a regular box or regular cabinet. Yeah, yeah. And they take that and they put it in an ISO box and they wonder why it sounds bad. Yeah. And he was like, I went through and found a speaker that sounds good in an ISO box. Okay. So he was like, you probably yeah. wouldn't like that speaker if you if it wasn't took it out there, of the ISO yeah. box, you'd be like, ooh, I don't like this. And so he did that. And then it, there's something with the way he did this like attenuation thing. Uh -huh. So the amp thinks it's playing louder. Yeah. And it's not a normal attenuator, I guess. Like Dave looked into this. Yeah. It's like, it's more than that. So there's some kind of series thing that he's doing. So like I can have the Jackson, that's an 18 watt tube amp. Okay. You crank it all the way up and yeah. It's like really, you can hear, you can hear it, yeah. but it's like really quiet. Yeah, that's incredible. Which is insane. And then what's cool, so I have a Sontronics Halo uh, dynamic mic in there, and it's just plugged straight into the Hoza patch bay oh, that's yeah. hooked up right there. And so like we can just track real guitar. So like on all the Utah stuff, like especially anything that's been over the last year. Yeah. Yeah, probably last year, that's all been. That's so cool. Right there in that box, which is super cool. And then just swap out amp heads if we want, because a bunch of the guys have really cool heads. Yeah. And it can handle, um, I'm trying to think, Adam has two, and I think he's done like 50 watt tube heads into it. And it Holy really good. cow. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, so that's that's a game changer, because you can sit here, and we're tracking like mic'd up amp guitars. With monitors on. And with that. monitors on. We're talking. Yep. And we're not interrupting the recording and the recording is not interrupting us, which is that's like so super cool. cool. So Scully Tape Machine, I found it on Craigslist like I think seven years ago, maybe eight yeah. for 250 bucks. What? Yeah. Oh my um, God. Which is kind of insane. Look there was that. a studio here in town and uh, there was a guy that was mastering a bunch and he had scooped up an MCI. I don't, I can't remember if he got a Mara machines or what, but yeah. he got an MCI deck that had um, quarter inch and half inch heads. And this is just a quarter inch machine. So he didn't need it anymore. Yep. That is and fantastic. honestly, it just, dude. We were mixing the new Utah record. We don't mix every one of our records to tape, but we mix like, we've mixed about half our records to tape. Mm -hmm. And we were, we got through half the record and, and it, and it just, and it, and it just went out on us, oh. which was so sad. So like the pinch wheel needs to get replaced. So anybody watching, if anybody knows of somebody that can help, help me get some get parts for this. Cause I, my tech can put it back together. I just need, um, a couple little parts so we can recalibrate it because I miss it, man. It's like, it's special and it's got the very speed so you can get 30 ips on it, which normally these only went to 15 Yeah. without that on there. And so like, dude, it's just like, I don't know. There's something special about it. Like I, I have all the tape plugins. I probably have them like not every single one, but I have most of them Yeah. and I'll like go back and forth and compare, but there's just yeah something special about it. And you drive into it kind of hard and hit the needles and like what it does to the bottom is really cool and so yeah like here's some this is utah tapes right here that's our 30p that's our 50p so nice. yeah man that's awesome well thank you for doing this and and let me come hang and i've been holding in because i've been here for a few days holding in all these and we've questions. been hanging in here too, i know man. it's been tough i know for sure we've started conversations and then we'll like direct them uh <laughs> direct them somewhere else so that we don't uh that, so we don't spoil it and man, let me just say, go get louder than liftoff stuff. Those are those oh, okay. dudes are so cool. Yeah. And they're like this super small operation. They're so friendly, so kind. They just came out with a new version of the Silver Bullet where they added the SSL cards in it too. Oh, nice. That looks so awesome. And so I just want to plug. Them. All right, yeah, shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, and shout out to you. I'll put your Instagram and your artist stuff and whatever yeah, else Red you want Licorice, me to put. Utah. Yeah. JTL group. That's the squad. I'll put it all down in the description so awesome. people can follow you and uh, I will stop recording this and we'll keep hanging. All right, cool. <laughs> See you guys.